Good evening everybody and once again welcome to the video. This is essentially part 2 of for beginners learning a Logstash and other Elasticsearch plugin. This video I'll be showing you how to essentially use a plugin called Filebeats and ship logs from Filebeats to Logstash, from Logstash to Elasticsearch and then we visualize those in Kibana. That's the end goal, let's get started straight into action. All right, so this is gonna be lab number two. All the codes are in my GitHub section, so please come and check that out. The first thing that we need to do is, I have already uploaded the data set for you. So if you come to lab two, you will see Logstash tutorial data set. I would love to you guys like uh, download that particular data set. Then this is the link that will allow you to download Filebeat, which is a plugin uh, for Elasticsearch, right? So uh, choose your operating system. I have chose a Windows and I have downloaded the zip file, okay? And then um, then I'll show you all the settings that we need to do for this project, okay? Uh, so before that, uh, so let me delete this one. Okay, so you guys are ready to learn? All right, so by the way, I have all my stack running locally, Elasticsearch, Kibana, Logstash, but I'll show you how we can start this uh, project that is lab number two. Uh, let me just set my camera here. All right. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to essentially have our data set in a, in a particular directory. If you see, it's in my download in my lab two folder and I have a folder here, logstash tutorial data set. Uh, the end goal of this is essentially, as I said, right? These are essentially logs that we want to essentially dump into Elasticsearch. Again, the grok pattern and all that's coming next video. Don't worry, we wanna go slow and understand the concept in detail. So here is my data set. So then I have, uh, you know, downloaded the plugin for Filebeats and I have extracted that in, the, uh, in, a, in, a, in a folder called software. Now let's head over to Filebeats and this is the, you know, my folder where my Filebeats is. And now if you um, essentially see, uh, there'll there will be a file that I have created called lab2.yml. And that is there on the GitHub section. So now let's see what that particular file looks like. So over here, I'm saying filebit.inputs. I'm defining my input, right? Type as log, and I'm essentially giving it a path to my log file. You can essentially give it to whatever path that you want, right? I'm just showing you a demo. Output is equal to, um, I'm providing the host for log stash. So the goal of this guy, this guy is gonna read data from the log and it's gonna dump data to the log stash, okay? And in the log stash, we can filter, we can try, you know, do all that stuff, but we just wanna understand the pipeline. So that's that, right? Very easy, okay? Now we, we will come into a log stash folder where we have installed our log stash. And here I will be coming to config um, folder. And here I have created a file called lab2.conf, which is again on the GitHub section. Let's read what this file says. Input, this means that, hey, I am gonna receive an input from Filebit plugin, which is listening on port 5044. The output of the log stash would be essentially, I wanna dump it on my console so I can read it. And I also wanna dump it to the Elasticsearch into an index called logdb, okay? Now, once that is done, so you have both the files. Now we need to start both Logstash and, um, what do you call this? Uh, Logstash and um, Filebeat, right? On the top uh, top corner, I have a Logstash. And on the bottom corner, I have Filebeat. We will start this, I'll show you. I have the commands in my notepad. So here, we say the command Logstash. Uh, remember, I have already set up an environment variable, which is why I can directly use the word logstash and I don't have to go to that directory and essentially do all that stuff. I've already saved that the path to my bin file in my environment variable. So I'm saying logstash minus F, I'm providing the conf file, right? The one, uh, 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 the one that's gonna get data from file beats and it's gonna dump to the Elasticsearch. So I'm providing that conf file to the logstash and then I'm saying uh, automatic reload, which means anytime I make any changes in the configuration, I don't want to manually turn off the server and then turn it on, automatically do the restart. Okay, so we copy this and I'll show you. Uh, so as you can see, now it's gonna start that up. Now I will do the same thing for my file beats. This is uh, on the bottom section, I have file beats. Before this uh, demo, what I would do is uh, I'm gonna add some fake log here 
So I'm gonna click on Notepad++ and uh, I'm just gonna randomly copy some uh, data points here and these are the your logs that your Python or any application generates, right? So I'm gonna copy this and I would scroll on the bottom section and all I'm doing is simply dumping those log here, okay? I have dumped, I'm saving that, okay? Uh, let this start first of all and by the way, I also wanna show you that I do not have any index currently called log DV. Uh, as you can see here, I do not have any index called log DV. So my uh, log stash is still starting. So we'll wait for this guy to start and then I'll start my file beat server, right? Come on, uh, hopefully should start up pretty soon. Uh, usually it takes a little time, uh, you know, uh, so just kind of be a little patient there. So yeah, I'm still waiting for this guy to start up. Usually in my lab one also, it did take a little time to restart because you have your Kibana, Logstash, uh, file beat so many things are running right so uh, yeah okay so now it is started as you can see uh, let's wait it's still starting though file because modules are command line option okay let's wait for the they should say like uh, listening on port 5080 um, I think that's the port right yeah now it's starting I think I have to hit enter on my computer so yeah, once it is, yeah, it is started starting server on port 5044, okay? Now, okay, now I will start my file beat. Uh, I can say, so dot slash file beat dot exe minus e minus c, I'm providing my YML file, which has the settings, right? And I'm gonna publish this, so ready? All right, so let me copy this guy right here. And all these syntax are on my GitHub section and the snippet section. So I just wanna show you, okay? So let me organize my screen, okay? And before uh, running this, I do wanna show you, I do not have any indices with that name, right? So now let's run this guy, okay? Enter. Now, so it's gonna, this file beat, as you can see, it's also outputting those, um, particular logs right so now you can see I can see the output but now if I head over to my elastic search that is here I see a log DB I can come here and search so now I uh, would love to show you a document on how a document looks like JSON formatter uh, and remember when you install all these stuff file beat log stash kibana elastic search your computer is gonna be a bit slow, okay? So do, because uh, it's a memory intensive, um, all these stuff, you know. So you have a host from where it did. You have an input that is a type log. ECS that, that it added. Tags, you also have a tag. This is your raw log. Remember, we'll use grog pattern to extract items from that as well. Version, we have the event here. We have the timestamp. Uh, we have the path of that log file, right? Uh, we have the offset as well, which is great, and the agent, right, uh, from where or, you know, where that agent was running, whatever, X, Y, Z. So, yeah, this is essentially a tutorial on how to connect file beats, log stash, Elasticsearch, right? Now, as we progress in the course, right, as we learn more and more, we'll explore grok patterns and, and filtering and all that stuff. <coughs> I'm simply following this blog here, and, uh, you know, I'm trying my best to put things here for you. So, as you can see, lab 2 i'll also put uh, these two snippets in my readme file so now when you come to my github you exactly know okay these are the file he did these are the settings that he was using and you can actually learn right so uh, let me just add this one all right so you have all your syntax here you have the file file as well the conf file and the yml so hopefully uh, it should be a fun exercise for you to try it out and learn. The next step will try to essentially use grok patterns and other things in lab number three. Thank you so much for watching. If you do enjoy these tutorials, a simple like would be appreciated. And uh, please share the video to the people whom you think this will be beneficial. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next video.